Hi there. Just wanted to show you the brushes in the brush pack, Chunky Paint. There are 15 brushes in this pack, and like the name says, they are all pretty chunky in appearance. So we'll start off here with BBs. Big brush of round dots that, in a lot of ways, look like BBs or any small circular object. These brushes, as I'm painting them, are all with the default stroke. So right out of the box, this is what they'll look like. There's really nothing specific that the brushes in this pack are designed to imitate or emulate. They are, like the category is called, chunky, and they are big brushes. Use them for whatever you can imagine, and you can get some really interesting results. So that is BBs. The next is BioGlow, and this is Glow Brush. And so it's like bioluminescence of some sea creature. If you make the brush smaller, you get some really interesting, strangely shaped little areas of paint. This, of course, works very best on a darker surface that I'm using here. They're supposed to kind of look like bioluminescent spots that you would find on some sort of sea creature. So that is BioGlow. The next is Chubby. This brush is kind of overlapping circles, but they form a straight line instead of being quite so random. They're fairly transparent, and so they build up quickly to opaque. A lighter stroke, I think, works a little better with them, and maybe even a faster stroke. So you can see the variation within the brush stroke. So that is the chubby brush variant. The next is convolute, and this brush blends a lot with the underlying color. So you can see here, it starts out with the color you select, and then it blends into the background, picking up that color. It is opaque, but it is blending. So that can be used for any number of things. Kind of a great brush if you're painting vegetation or some random natural thing, water maybe, water in a waterfall. Uh, you're just really limited by your own imagination when using these kind of brushes. So that is convolute. This is corpulent. Another fat stroke, this one with a lot of grain in it. It varies from very small strokes up to the fast, really chunky ones. Kind of an interesting brush. You could use it for animal spots. I guess there's all sorts of things you can use it for. I like to use these brushes generally when I've finished an image to add more texture and interest to uh, specific areas. So that is the corpulent brush. The next is Disorient, and it is a brush that, if you're trying to paint straight, it won't let you. It disorients you. It goes in all directions. You can't even tell that it follows your cursor, though it does. So, very random brush. That is Disorient. Very random brush. Very opaque. Doesn't blend very much. Uh, these are all really fun brushes to use. Fat Germs. Kind of what you might expect to see in a Petri dish. Guess they could be fat viruses. I like this brush. Again, it goes from very small to very fat. Random. Kind of out of control, but still very chunky. That is fat germs. Next one is heavy. Like it says, it's just a heavy brush. Heavy, opaque, doesn't bleed. It's a little smoother. It may be similar to finger painting. Pretty random in its orientation. Follows the stroke, but you can't tell. The chaos is pretty high. But whenever you need something thick. So that is heavy. Lots of bits. Big brush, but it paints an awful lot of little, tiny, fairly transparent, circular bits. From very, very tiny that you can see up to the larger size. Somewhat driven by the angle. Lots of bits. Great for painting sand, those kind of things. Molten gold. This is a good brush for painting gold. Again, works better on a darker background. It has the feeling of molten, very liquid gold kind of object. The glow brushes are always fun to use. Perplexing. 
Probably another confusing brush, a bit like Disorient. Not quite as random. There seems to be some order in the brush. I guess it's perplexing because how can you figure it out to do something maybe a little more specific you're interested in? Not that it's important, but that is the perplexing brush. Plump grain, kind of vertical, very grainy strokes. No bleed, very opaque. Like this brush a lot. Great for backgrounds. If you paint vertically with it, it gives you spots. Kind of these nice, almost cell like kind of grainy structures. So that is plump grain. Thick thin. This is, I think, one of my favorites. So it starts thick and goes thin. Make it smaller. You can make a field of flowers. Very useful brush. I use this one a fair amount, adding detail to plants, trees, whatever you can think of. Good brush. I like thick thin a lot. If you're a little slower with it, you can maintain a little more common diameter through the whole thing and sketch with it a little bit. So that is thick thin. Tubby. This is a brush that blends with the underlying color. Resaturates a little bit and then bleeds into the background color and the value of the color changes as you paint. And all these brushes are made to be chunky and big, useful if they're bigger, but it doesn't mean you can't make them smaller and use them for whatever you can imagine. Sometimes I think the best brushes are the ones that aren't specifically labeled something and you can use them for whatever you want. You're not locked into thinking, oh, this is going to paint a wing, it's going to paint snow, or whatever. So this last brush is Rive, another very grainy brush. And this one goes from very tiny to large and very curvy and curly kind of pieces. It does look like it's writhing around. Kind of a neat brush to use. And that is the Rive brush. So these are the 15 brushes in the Chunky Paint Pack. Great brushes since you can kind of not be locked into a preconceived idea on how to use them. It's open to your imagination. It is the Chunky Paint Pack.